welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we are discussing some very general concepts about a good design and uh, we had said that uh, design is a iterative procedure and uh, the designer can come up with uh, different designs, but the different designs can vary in their quality and we are trying to find out how to distinguish between two designs when can we say that a design is good or bad? We identify some characteristics of a good design. One of the very important characteristic is modularity. The different modules in the design should be more or less independent and we said that functional independence is a important characteristic in good design. Now, we said that to identify functional independence, we need to look at the cohesion and coupling among the modules. Now, let us uh, proceed from that point. A good design where the modules are functionally independent, these have high cohesion and low coupling. If they have high cohesion and low coupling, we say that the modules are functionally independent, but then we must uh, define the terms cohesion and coupling. having a module structure where the modules show functional independence has uh, many advantages. One advantage is understandability. This is an example of modules where there are no independence, no dependence here. So, the modules are independent and uh, here we can understand the different uh, modules one by one, just take out this one module, can understand there is no dependency. Whereas, here where we have these modules where there is a high dependency, to be able to understand one module, we need to also understand the modules on which it depends. And, uh, can see that a module has dependency structure with many other modules and therefore, to understand one module, we will have to understand many other modules and the task becomes extremely difficult. But if uh, there is uh, functional independence, we can easily understand the modules and also any error condition in a module is isolated. If we find that the function, uh, the system as a whole is not functioning, or there is an error, we can easily identify the error, but uh, if they are dependent on each other, heavily dependent on each other, we will have to keep on tracing the execution sequences and it may lead to just going round and round without really able to determine the error. So, the advantages of functional independence is that the complexity of the design is reduced, it becomes easy to maintain debug and also we can take out any one module here and reuse in another application, whereas here this situation it may not be possible, because if we want to take this module for reusing we might have to take the other modules on which it is dependent or calls the functions of the other modules. Now, let us list the advantages of functional independence. One is that it uh, reduces the complexity of the system, it makes it easy to understand, it reduces error propagation any error in a module 
when the system fails we can easily trace it to this module whereas uh, if they are heavily dependent we can just go round and round trying to figure out where the error is and uh, becomes very difficult to debug if there is a high coupling and there is a heavy dependency among modules the third reason why functional independence is advantageous is that reuse of modules becomes easier. If we have developed an application consisting of functionally independent modules, we can just take out any module and reuse in another application without much problem. Whereas, uh, if our module structure is like this, then we cannot just take out one module and use it. If we take this, we will have to also take across the entire application. Reuse is a major issue in software engineering because it reduces cost. If we can reuse parts of one application in another application, it is very advantageous. And therefore, in the design stage, we have to design such that reuse is facilitated and that becomes possible if the module structure are functionally independent. Now, we have been saying that functional independence is good, it has many advantages and so on, but uh, given a design structure it uh, may not be that all modules are totally independent. That is a very idealistic design where no module ever interacts with any other module. In real applications modules uh, do interact with each other, they call each other's functions and so on. But then given an arbitrary application design, can we measure the functional independence of that design? So, that we can say that this is a better design than another design. It would have been very nice if we could come up with a quantitative measure of the degree of independence, but we can do the next thing. It is very difficult to come up with a quantitative measure, but we can do one thing is that we can classify the cohesion and coupling and based on that we can approximately say which is a better design than another. So, let me just repeat that point that quantitative measure of functional independence that is the cohesion and coupling in terms of their cohesion and coupling there is no accepted practice, there is no accepted technique by which we can measure the functional independence and everybody will agree with that. But we can do the next best thing that is we can characterize the cohesion and coupling in terms of certain classes and depending on the class to which an application belongs the cohesion and coupling we can say that its design is very good, moderate, bad and so on. Let us see how we can classify the cohesion and coupling existing in a design. Here we will see that there is a small scope for ambiguity because we can argue that design belongs to this class or another class, but then more or less we get a fairly good picture even though we do not uh, quantitatively say that it is 70.1 percent, you can say that it is between 60 to 70 or between 70 to 80 and that itself will help us to a great extent. First, let us look at cohesiveness. The cohesion existing in a module can be classified into coincidental, logical, temporal, procedural, 
communicational, sequential and functional. So, that is 7 classes and the worst form of cohesion is coincidental. You can just examine a module and then we should be able to tell where in this spectrum does the cohesion of the module lie. Is it coincidental and this will be a bad form of cohesion or is it something like a temporal or procedural which is middle order or is it functional which is the best form of cohesion. Now, let us see what are these different uh, types of cohesion. So, that given a module structure we should be able to roughly place it in this spectrum. First, let us see the worst form of cohesion that is coincidental cohesion. Here there is no thought or design behind uh, putting functions into a module. We have just randomly assigned them to modules. The different functions existing in the program they have been randomly put into different modules without any thought or design. If this is the case that we just select a set of functions randomly and assign them to a module and uh, we ask the question that can you tell us what does this module do we will be very hard pressed to give a simple answer to what the module does you can say that okay it does this and this and this etc let us look at an example let us say we have a module uh, and we cannot even think of a good name to the module, we just gave it the name AAA because it does various stuff. In a library management software, there are many functions like register, student, register, book, collect fine, issue book, return book and so on. We just took three functions here and just put them part of this module that it does little bit of inventory, print the current inventory and also register student and also issue book. Now, if we ask what does this module do, we will say that okay, it uh, does some inventory functions like print inventory, it does some student uh, registration and it also does issue book. So, we cannot give a simple one word description of this module to capture what it does. There are functions which are doing very different things. Uh, this is an example of coincidental cohesion and given an example you can easily find out given an example module you can easily find out whether uh, it is a case of coincidental cohesion. Now, let us look at the slightly better form of cohesion called as logical cohesion. Here all elements of the module perform similar functions. For example, all functions do error handling, all may do let us say print statements or uh, read data scan statements or all print statements etcetera. So, here all the functions here do similar functions and just because the functions do similar things we just decided to put them into one module. For example, in an application if we put all print functions that generate an output report into a single module, then we will say that the module has a logical cohesion. This cohesion also we can unambiguously and easily identify. For example, if we find a module named print, which prints various things like it prints grades, it prints certificates, it prints salary slip, it prints inventory details and so on. So, just because all these functions do printing, we decided to put them into one single module 
and call it uh, print and then this is a logical cohesion not a very good form of cohesion, but better than coincidental or random cohesion. A slightly better form of cohesion is the temporal cohesion. Here we group functions together if they are executed within the same time span. For example, let us say during initialization certain functions are executed one after other and before any other function can execute the initialization functions start or let us say we have a certain shutdown procedure etcetera. So, here these functions do very different things, but then they have been put into one module just because they run during the initialization time. Just to give an example, let us say we have a function called as init and then we do check memory, check hard disk, then initialize the ports, then display some login prompts on the screen. So, here the functions do very different purpose, something displays on the screen some message, initialize port, then checking whether memory is all right, hard disk is all right etcetera, but then they are run in the same time span and that is the reason we have decided to put them in one module called as init and uh, this is an example of uh, temporal cohesion that is they execute in the same time span. A still better form of cohesion is the procedural cohesion. Here the different uh, functions in the module they are part of some algorithm. For example, that they carry out some steps let us say uh, for decoding a message they do some steps like initialize and then uh, let us say discrete cosine transform and then let us say entropy calculation and so on. So, these are set of uh, steps uh, which is part of a algorithm and uh, we have just put them together, but uh, because uh, they are part of the al algorithm even though they do very different things. A better form of cohesion is communicational cohesion. Here the different functions they operate on the same data structure. So, the result is shared between the different functions. Just consider the set of functions defined on an array or stack. Let us say stack, push, pop, etcetera. So, here the functions on the stack they all operate on the stack and use that data structure and this we can call as a communicational cohesion. This is an example of a communicational cohesion is handle student data is the name of the module and then there is a data here student data 10000. So, this is the data here and then we have various functions there in the module which are operating on this for example, search student data, print all data and uh, store student data, update student data and so on. So, this is a better form of cohesion than the cohesion that we talked about so far is the communicational cohesion and a still better form of cohesion is the sequential cohesion. Here again the different functions in the module share data, but then they just do not randomly update the data here the data is passed from one function to the other in a sequence. For example, first do sorting then search then display and so on, but the best form of cohesion is a functional cohesion. Here the different functions they share data but then they work towards achieving a single function. For example, 
if uh, all the functions to manage an employee's payroll, we just put them together into a module like compute overtime, compute the current month's pay, change the basic salary and so on. So, these are all towards uh, managing the employee's payroll and uh, here one of the distinguishing characteristic is that by looking at the module structure, we can just give a very simple name here to the module saying that manage employees payroll because all functions work towards doing some part of the managing employees payroll. So, one test whether a module has a functional cohesion is that we should be able to describe the function of the module or what the module achieves by using a very simple sentence. Now, let us uh, see how to identify the cohesiveness of a module. Let us say we are given a module and we are asked to find that uh, what is the cohesion here? Is it a good form of cohesion, bad form of cohesion? Now, we know the seven classes of cohesion starting from very bad case, case of coincidental cohesion and uh, then the best form of cohesion that is a functional cohesion. We can imagine that uh, there may be some ambiguity whether to consider it as a sequential cohesion or let us say procedural cohesion and so on. But then if it is a bad case of cohesion we can easily identify or whether it is a somewhat ok level of cohesion or a very good case of cohesion. So, that much we can easily identify. One hint about identifying the cohesion is that first look at the module and the functions that it has and try to describe what is the function of the module, what does the module achieve and then we write this in a sentence and if we find that if the sentence is, uh, is a compound sentence that it does this and this and so on. then it has a sequential or communicational cohesion. We, we are not mentioning here the coincidental cohesion because that is easily identified that is a bad case of cohesion that the functions are totally unrelated, but these are the middle cases here we are just trying to give some hint how to identify if it is a compound sentence then we can suspect that it has sequential or communicational cohesion. If the sentence has words like fast it does this, then it does this and afterwards it does this and so on, then it is either a sequential or temporal cohesion. If it has words like uh, initialize, shutdown procedure etcetera, then it possibly has a temporal cohesion. So, far we looked at uh, cohesion classification and given a module how to identify the cohesiveness. Now, let us look at coupling given two modules can we identify what is the extent of coupling between these two modules. We say that uh, two modules are highly coupled if uh, they have a very complex interaction among each other. If there is no interaction, then we will say that there is no coupling, but then the cases where they interact that is they call one module calls function of another module, then we will say that there is a coupling, but then we will see how to identify the class of coupling or how complex is the coupling. Roughly we can say that uh, the coupling between two modules can be identified by looking at their interface complexity. 
Now, just like we did the classification for cohesion, we will do a classification of coupling. There are five types of coupling that exist. So, these are named as data coupling, stamp coupling, control coupling, common coupling and content coupling. The data coupling is a simple form of coupling and it is a low coupling, it is a good case of coupling. And if it is a stamp coupling, then there is a complex data that is interchanged. In simple data coupling, only simple data items like integer or character etcetera, simple data items are exchanged between two modules. In stamp coupling, more complex data items like a array or a big structure list etcetera are exchanged between different modules and uh, this is still an ok form of coupling. Worse forms of coupling are control coupling, where one module decides the control path in another module. Common coupling, they share some common data and then the very bad case of coupling is content coupling and uh, this is so bad content coupling that earlier using assembly routines or machine language programming content coupling was uh, possible, but now all high level languages the it is difficult to write a program where there will be content coupling. So, the bad cases the worst case of content coupling uh, cannot even write that code now in high level languages, because the high level languages have been designed such that this uh, coupling does not occur because it is a very bad case of coupling and make the program extremely complex. We will stop at this point and we will continue in the next lecture and we will look at the how to given a module two modules, can we study these two modules and identify what is the extent of coupling or which class of coupling out of these five classes exists between those two modules. Uh, we will stop now and uh, continue in the next lecture. Thank you.